Hello and welcome back to Shakespeare. We are working on Troilus and Cressida and we get to hear from Hector today in Act 4, Scene 5, which is the fight scene. There is one thing that I had forgotten to mention before that I'll get to in the recap just now. So on the love story part of things, Troilus and Cressida were able to consummate their love, but then Cressida is being traded away to the Greeks in order to get this Trojan prisoner named Anthenor back. And as she was leaving, Troilus wasn't super, super fighting to keep her, but he kept telling her to be true. And she's like, you're telling me to be true? Are you gonna be true? And he's like, yeah, absolutely I will. They did exchange gifts. Uh, I believe they exchanged like a ring and a sleeve. I, I need to look more into the cultural significance of sleeves from that period of time that that was a, a lovely gift to give someone. But anyway, they did, they exchanged tokens of their love for each other. Before they parted ways, Troilus took her down to the port so that she could be taken off to the Greeks. And he told Diomedes to take care of her. And Diomedes is like, yeah, I will. And Troilus is like, no, you won't. But anyway, she's been sort of brought into the Greek camp and everybody wanted to kiss her when she got there and all of that. But now we're on to the fighting part of the story because remember a long time ago Hector had issued a challenge uh, the Greeks decided that Ajax was going to be their champion because they wanted to get in a little bit of a dig at Achilles so they inflated Ajax's ego and he was like chomping at the bit to fight and at the very end of Act 4 scene 4 we hear the trumpet sounding saying it's time to fight and they're like oh no we're late we're late so now everybody's at like the battlefield and the Trojans were a little bit late in getting there but they got there and they're like all right we're gonna do this we're gonna fight and they start fighting and the appropriate sides are cheering on their appropriate guy and Agamemnon notices very sad sack looking guy and Ulysses identified him as Troilus but then after that has happened, the fighting actually starts. And they, they didn't decide before the battle whether or not this was a battle to the death. They're like, we'll just start fighting. So they just start fighting and there's the cheering going on. And then after a little while, the trumpet sounds, which is sort of like the bell ringing at the end of a round in boxing or whatever. And they're like, okay, how's everybody doing? And Ajax is like, I'm not even warmed up yet. I want to fight some more. And, um, they're like, well, I guess then it's up to Hector whether or not we want to keep fighting or not like Hector. And Hector says, why then will I know more? Thou art, great lord, my father's sister's son, a cousin German to great Priam's seed. The obligation of our blood forbids a gory emulation twixt us twain. Were thy commixion Greek and Trojan so, that thou couldst say, this hand is Grecian all, and this is Trojan. The sinews of this leg all Greek, and this all Troy. My mother's blood runs on the dexter cheek, and this sinister bounds in my father's. By Jove multipotent, thou shouldst not bear from me a Greekish member, wherein my sword had not in pressure made of our rank feud. But the just gods gainsay that any drop thou borrowedst from thy mother, my sacred aunt, should by my mortal sword be drained. Let me embrace thee, Ajax. By him that thunders thou hast lusty arms. Hector would have them fall upon him thus. Cousin, all honor to thee. So Hector calls off the fight because they're cousins. And the, what he's talking about here in this whole monologue is that since Ajax is half Greek, half Trojan, if it was as simple as like his right side is Greek and his left, hand, his left side is Trojan, Hector would totally go to town on the Trojan side and injure the crap out of it. But since the blood, both Greek and Trojan blood, cycles through him and the gods say you shouldn't kill your family, they have to end the fight in a hug, not in a death. And Ajax, is he's cool with that. He's like, yeah, you know, I came out here to kill you, but let's hug instead. And so they do, and, <laughs> and Aeneas is like, um, what do we, what do we tell everybody else? And then they all decide that since Achilles had wanted to dine with Hector, because that's how he thought he was going to get back in everybody's good graces, and Agamemnon wanted to meet Hector, that, they, that Hector should just come back to the Greek camp and have dinner. So Hector tells most of the 
Trojans to just go home and then he goes to meet the Greeks and, and as he's going around and meeting them, they're, everybody's being very cordial and very, you know, um, complimentary of one another and all that. And it gets around to uh, him meeting Menelaus and they're like, yes, this is our king, Menelaus. And Hector's like, oh, so you're, you're him. Your, your old wife, your former wife, Helen, told me not to like say anything, but you know, she, she does speak highly of you. And Menelaus is like, don't even say her name. And then Nestor is going to break the silence in tomorrow's monologue. So we'll see you then for that. Mwah.